Hello, I'm Judy Stiles. Thank you for joining us today on Newsmakers. Our program this week takes a different approach. Instead of being in the studio with guests on the set, we're taking a look at a program outside of the studio. It focuses on Southern Media Showcase Day, an event held in the fall where hundreds of area high school students gather at Missouri Southern to learn about the media. We're going to feature presentations by two Southern graduates who returned to campus to talk about their careers. Napadal Pothong, who is a nature photographer for the Missouri Department of Conservation, shared some insight on in what it takes to get those amazing pictures you see in publications like the Missouri Conservationist Magazine. And Alonzo Medcalf, a videographer for KMOV TV in St. Louis, talks about what it's like to be on the front lines as a news photographer bringing the news to you in your homes. So stay tuned in the next half hour as we feature presentations from both of these professionals professionals and take a look at the field of videography and photography and telling stories through pictures. I'm a graduate from Missouri Southern. Um, I was born in Thailand and if some of you wonder how I got my name, I usually kind of joke around. I do a lot of programs across the country. Whenever I tell people that my name is Nopin Pratong and I'm from Missouri and they kind of laugh. Um, <laughs> Um, my, my degree was in uh, communication journalism, and I worked here in this building, uh, in this very building on the third floor at the chart. I was a photo editor for many years, and uh, today I would like to share with you about the life as a nature photographer. And many of you probably wonder how I got this job, right? Because it sounds pretty cool to be a nature photographer. But um, just like any other job out there, you have good day and bad day. So let's start the program. How many of you here got the Missouri Conservationist magazine? Oh, I read it? Oh, come on, it had to be every hands. Okay, it's a free magazine, and, uh, and I photograph, uh, I have been working for the Department of Conservation now for almost 10 years. It will be 10 years by January, actually. Um, before that, I was a photojournalist with the uh, Springfield News Leader, and before that, I was job in Globe. Um, I like working for newspaper. It was a big, quite a big transition for me uh, when I moved to the uh, Department of Conservation. Um, so today I'm going to show you some of the stuff that I do in the Department of Conservation. Um, I do a lot of in-depth story. I shoot a lot of subjects. Uh, if you see a magazine, most wildlife was shot by me. Um, I do a lot of photo essay. This is kind of one example that this was uh, done about eight years ago on the elusive bird that I spent four months photographed for the magazine and turned to a photo essay. So um, some of you probably thought, wow, Nob has a very cool job to be a nature photographer. Um, well, it is. Um, and life as a photographer, is, it sounds great right, to go out there and take photographs, but it's more than that. And you spend a lot of time out in the cold by yourself, and you spend a lot of time researching your subjects. So the next video will kind of give you a little short um, to, see, to kind of let you see how, what my daily life is like. Um, just hang with me for a few minutes. My day usually starts at 4 in the morning. <laughs> and this was in western Kansas when I worked on my book on the uh, prairie chicken. <laughs> I told people that I carry so much weight, that's why I'm short. <laughs> I set my photo blind. A lot of time I photograph subject from the photo blind, so I had to set photo blind the day before and then go back the next morning. How many of you here have seen prairie chicken, by the way? Probably zero, oh, one or two, quite a few, okay, well good. So the prairie chicken is a native bird here in Missouri. They're pretty rare uh, in Kansas too, uh, there are not many left. So I spent about 11 years working with the birds, photographing for my book.
the bird will come out in the morning, do some dance, and the best dancer will get to marry the female. So you can imagine all the birds who are dancing to try to get female attention. You can imagine my wife when she first saw this video, she nearly had a heart attack. Um, but that's how you get a cool photo like this. Um, when you photograph anything or work with video, believe me, shoot at the eye level of your subject uh, because you can become personal. And again, I don't tell anybody to go pursue crazy snack, you know. I know my subject very well. So people probably think, wow, no, I want to have your job. Well, um, and I, I do a lot of talk across the country and people always look at me like, I wish I have your job. Well, um, they compare my job to their vacation, that's me sitting in this chair with a price tag on it. Um, they, they compare my job to a, when you go on vacation, right, go to Yellowstone National Park, you get up at 10 in the morning, drink some coffee a little bit, go take some photograph, and come back and do some more shopping, and then go take photograph. Well, being a professional photographer is not like that. Um, in reality, um, I spend a lot of time dragging my photo blind in deep snow, and a lot of time sitting and waiting in the cold. This was 20 below zero in Wyoming, um, in, the, in the blind. And, uh, and sometimes it's very cold. <laughs> and a lot of times I photograph in snake infested water in wetland. And a lot of times sit and waiting. That's all about sit and waiting. And any of you ever saying that I never take bad photographs? I took a lot of bad photographs. Um, so it's okay to learn. And I spend a lot of time for my family, uh, home sweet home, hotel room. So we work long hours and spend a lot of time traveling on the road. And that's a part of my job that most people don't understand that that's what it took to be a wildlife photographer or any type of photography. You, know, you do because you like what you do. So how do I get, th how do I get this job? Well, um, part of my time I spent, I took a lot of photographs, and uh, before I worked for the Department of Conservation, I worked in the media. Um, you can imagine though, I took million and million and million of photographs every year. And today I'm gonna show you some sample of my images um, that I took and uh, why I think it's important and what it shaped to, to me, to who I, who I am today. Well, that was me. Um, 20 years ago, uh, photographed elk. Um, I first came to the United States in 1993. Uh, like most photographers, and believe it or not, that kind of flannel shirt kind of come back again, right, in the fashion. I saw quite a few. <laughs> My wife threw away, and she's like, oh, this is horrible. She threw away about 10 years ago, and now, of course, it came back. Um, <laughs> Uh, just like most wildlife photographers in my early career, I focus on the big and majestic wildlife, the wolf, the bear, the elk, and all that stuff. But, um, but later on, I shift my focus to something that people don't know a lot about, something that needs more attention. And I have a good teacher. Um, this was my um, former professor from uh, Northern Idaho, um, where I took wildlife photography class before I transferred to Missouri Southern. 
Uh, and here too, I have a lot of good p professors that helped me along the way to make me who I am. Um, in my early career, um, I focused a lot on a lot of new story, a story of somebody who lost best friends in a car accident, a story about somebody who lost a home during a hurricane in Central America, and the story of a mother who kissed her daughter last kiss goodbye, she died from cancer. Uh, just simple a story of a person who was taking a nap. Um, I like to photograph that way because I think it has some story. And if you look at my photograph even now in Missouri Conservation, this magazine, it has a little bit of story in it. It's just not snapshot. It's a story. And my background also in art, obviously this is not my painting. Um, this is by famous artist Monet. <laughs> um, if you look at my photograph, you, you see a lot of art in there. Uh, my background in art and journalism. So, um, so people ask what art have to do with photography. Well, everything. In fact, I learned to see color, detail, and a color combination. Just like painting, my photographs start with just like a background, right? Um, when I start photographing anything, I start with background because like a big canvas, you start painting all the color in the background first, and then you go with subject. And that's my approach. Painted bunting. Yeah. And a monarch butterfly. How many of you see here have seen monarch? I hope everybody have seen monarch butterfly, right? Sure. Yeah. I didn't spend a lot of time with monarch before until this summer when my daughter came to me and said, show me this cool little caterpillar. And I start to learn a lot about it. It became my passion. And another thing I didn't mention a lot is whatever you care the most in your work will show in your work. Uh, whether photography or video or writing, any kind of thing, if you're passionate about what you do, it will show in your photograph. So I continue to work on my subject. Uh, it doesn't matter like what I know about the subject. I will continue to work on it. And if any professional photographer ever tell you that he or she never make mistakes, he or he or she never take bad photographs, I don't think he or she tell you the truth because uh, I took a lot of bad photographs too. Um, and that's part of learning process. You have to learn from your mistake and you continue to work to achieve your goal. See the wax wing or ball eagle at 25 below zero? How many students here from Diamond, Missouri? Are you? No, no Diamond High School? Okay, well this was shot just uh, nearby Diamond, Missouri. Uh, one of my favorite photographs of all time. Um, I took a lot of photographs, and uh, that day I didn't expect it to get anything. I'll just share you some stories. You may have some time. But um, it was, uh, I went out there. I didn't know anything about Perry back in 2000. I got sent to photograph from the Joplin Globe assignment. And I went there. I didn't know what to expect. I saw this beautiful flower, uh, purple corn flower. I saw this little moth, a skipper, kind of land on. It's windy, you know, windy 30, 40 miles an hour. And uh, so I just focused on that and shot it. And I didn't realize what I got until we came back to the office. It was the last picture of the 60 frame, the last picture. And uh, that became my favorite photograph. Or the fox. Or the bisons, right? <laughs> well, um, <laughs> well um, people ask me, so how do you get your job at the Department of Conservation? Um, believe me or not, I got a job, Department of Conservation, because of prairie chicken. At the time, when I went for an interview, um, I had a portfolio that I worked on prairie chicken. I started here in southwest Missouri to start to photograph. There's a prairie chicken right here. I, it's a, my, this sound is booming. Yeah. Well, at the time I had a portfolio, I went for the interview. What I didn't realize at the time was after my supervisor later told me that um, there were 300 photographers apply for my job. 300. That's a lot. Um, and what he liked in my portfolio was he can see in my portfolio that I have so much passion in what I do, uh, and I can photograph both people, and my photograph have story. It's not just a snapshot. And again, prairie chicken, right? I became so obsessed with a prairie chicken um, when I first started, because there are not many left. And in fact, in Missouri, we have only less than 150 left in Missouri. There used to be a million and million of them, and make you wonder why, right? So I started to photograph. The more I photographed, uh, the more I became obsessed with it. <laughs> and my wife told me, like, why don't you work a book on prairie chicken? And at the time, I didn't realize it was going to take me a long, long time to finish. It took me 11 years. <laughs> uh, 
And that's the whole timeline of my book. And I published my book in 2012. This is my book, Save the Last Dance. <laughs> All right, good morning, good morning. I have no idea how I'm gonna follow that. Uh, my presentation isn't as cool as his, but that was, that was a great presentation. I was honored to, to listen and to meet uh, Navadal. He's a great guy. Um, again, my name is Alonzo Metcalf. I was a student here from 2007 to 2010. I graduated with a uh, bachelor's degree in communication, emphasis in broadcast media. Um, uh, the one thing that uh, I picked up here at uh, Missouri Southern State, working for KGCS was, uh, it was, it was an uh, experience that introduced me to the job that I can't not not do. I know that's grammatically incorrect, um, but it was KGCS that introduced me to the world of journalism. Um, I couldn't find a better picture than that of me working for KGCS. Uh, as I was sitting there listening to Napadal give this presentation, I, I wish I had like a still photographer following me around. That would be cool so I can have some good pictures for presentations like this. But this is me um, in like 2007 when I was a student here uh, working for KGCS. And uh, you know, in high school, you have a tremendous amount of guidance. But the one thing you don't have in, in, in college is, is that type of guidance. You have a tremendous amount of freedom uh, in, in college. And uh, you're, you're sort of on your own, so to speak. So what I want you to take away from what I'm saying is uh, don't look past your education, whether it's in high school or college, to your dream job. Uh, don't just go through the motions with, with your education. It's because your education your education is going to lay that groundwork and the foundation for that dream job that you want. Uh, it was a, KGCS was a very important time in my life. Being a student at Missouri Southern State was a very important time in my life. Uh, it's where I uh, found my direction. I knew I wanted to be a part of broadcast media. I had no clue how to get into television. I knew nothing about television, but I knew that I liked shooting video and I wanted to shoot video. And it was KGCS where I found that direction. Um, as you see, I'm working uh, one of the big in-studio cameras there. Um, eventually, that led to a job at KSN doing the same thing, uh, being an in-studio camera operator. Um, so KGCS is where I, I learned the theory of video production. Uh, uh, broadcast media is where I learned the theory. And also learned something very important as well. I learned what the employer was looking for. This was a very important time in my life because I hadn't had very many jobs. I didn't know what employers were looking for, especially in broadcast media. So I learned here on this campus exactly what the employer was looking for, and that's experience. Uh, most employers are looking for someone who has experience in the particular job that they're applying for. It's a rare occasion that, that someone's gonna give you a job and give you three months to get ready for it. So like I said, don't look past your education. Uh, take advantage, take full advantage of your, your high school education and what you're learning as far as in the TV production area that you're in and also in college. Don't just go through the motions and collect your degree and not look forward to the future and your, your career. Uh, take full advantage of uh, your time here at Missouri Southern. Um, uh, don't, don't leave without getting a great experience and uh, having something prepared for your current, your career that you're striving for. Um, the one thing that I really appreciated about Missouri Southern State University and also uh, KGCS, I mean, I love the class structure. It was, a, it was a smaller class structure, so that meant you had direct access to the teacher. Uh, it's very hands-on. I mean, we got hands-on very quick. So that meant you were gaining experience, and that meant you were also building a resume for your career that you, you're striving to, to, to get. Uh, it was a cool experience for me because I was able to work on campus, learn the theory and the practice, and also work part-time as an in-studio camera operator at KSN, the local television station here. So uh, I was doing like a dual program, uh, if you want to look at it that way. I was getting my education and also working in the field. So that meant when I collected my degree, when I got my degree, I had already had two years of experience as a photographer in the business. And that, was, that made me more valuable to, to the employer than someone who had a diploma but no, no uh, experience. So, so take full advantage of uh, you know, your, your time here and all your resources that you do have. <clears throat> um, if there's one thing that I want you to take away from what I'm saying, networking is very important. It's, 
Uh, that was one of the most important things that I took away from my experience here at Missouri Southern State and also um, at KGCS. Uh, networking is important. Make sure you network with your faculty, your staff, uh, fellow students who may be employees of local television stations, uh, the local television stations themselves in town. Um, don't, uh, don't be afraid to go by and you know, uh, to, to try to be a fly on the wall. This is a very small market, so they'll let you in the door. They'll let you shadow someone. You can shadow a photographer, reporter, news director, producer. Um, obviously, I'm a photographer, so not everyone in this room may want to be a photographer. Some of you may want to be reporters and anchors and uh, producers or news directors. So if you have that opportunity to go to your local news station, or maybe you want to write for the paper, go to the, to the uh, I believe it's the Joplin Globe, or even you know the chart when you get here as a student at Missouri Southern State University. Um, Bruce Vondahar, I mean, he's, he's a great resource. Don't, don't uh, just go through the motions and not take advantage of someone who worked <clears throat> for a local news station and also works for the high school. So, so take full advantage of all the resources and make sure you network. Uh, <clears throat> if you see a photographer on the street, collect his business card. If you see a reporter on the street, stop, talk to him, get a business card. Never throw a business card away. Make sure you network. Uh, that's one thing I could, uh, if I wanted to stress on this, something I wanted to stress is make sure you network. Um, and don't be afraid to take, uh, don't be afraid to volunteer your time as well uh, for a local television station or um, the chart or the, the globe or maybe if you want to be in PR, volunteer your time. Take an internship. Internships are very important. Uh, it, will, uh, it will help you get practical experience in the, the field that you, you're studying to, to learn. Or take an entry-level position um, like I did. If you have an opportunity to learn and also work in the field, uh, you'll be you will appreciate it later uh, when you are applying for, for, uh, for jobs. You, you have all the experience already. You have a degree and experience. Uh, I was talking to the president right here. He's, he, he said, you know, I really envy you. you, you you're young and you did a lot. And I wish I did a lot more. So um, we have an opportunity. There are a lot of resources out there. We have the opportunity to do a lot. I mean, uh, it just all you have to do is just do it. The university will provide you uh, with a different, you know, different opportunities. Like I said, from the chart to the uh, to shooting video and, and working in studio, and being a reporter, being an anchor. There's a great television show here. So those are some things I wanted to stress about when I was a student here at Missouri Southern State University. Um, you know, take full advantage of this experience, this opportunity. Don't, like I said, don't just go through the motions and just. Uh, blow your, your education off and expect that someone's going to hand you your dream job. It just doesn't work that way. You have to work extremely hard for what you want. And it, it takes time and it takes effort, but in the end, you'll, you'll enjoy the, the results. So that was my experience as a student at Missouri Southern State University. Uh, so I'll give you just like a, a look into what I do every day as a journalist. I am now currently a photojournalist for a local news station in St. Louis, Missouri, KMOV TV, the CBS affiliate. So I uh, get an opportunity to film all the, all the news and sports and stuff around the area. So I'll give you just a, a look into what I do every day. So that's just a picture of me standing next to the uh, KMOV helicopter. Uh, the thing about being a journalist is I have absolutely no idea what I'm gonna be doing that day. So, and, that, and that, that's pretty cool to me. Uh, I, I love adventure, excitement. So it's, it's like, <laughs> it's, it's a surprise when I walk in the door. I have no idea if I'm going to be just shooting a regular interview or am I going to be 10,000 feet in the air shooting a, a police chase uh, going down the highway. I have absolutely no idea. So I can go from being in the air 10,000 feet covering a police chase to the next day I'm covering severe storm damage. This was a, the result of a, a tornado, uh, F0, kind of small, of course. but. Um, the result of a tornado. I'm there covering the storm. Uh, day before, I might have been in the air. Now I'm on the, the ground covering the storm. Or uh, you can't tell who that is, but the guy closest to me is Rand Paul. I could be talking to a, a presidential uh, candidate. You know, I mean, I can go from one day being in the chopper to covering the storm to talking to a, a presidential candidate. So obviously, it's a, it's a cool, exciting, adventurous job. But it obviously takes work to get to where you are. You know, it takes work to get to get there to the to bigger markets and 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 doing things like that. So, or sports. I mean, that's that's really why I signed up uh, to work for KGCS. I absolutely loved covering Missouri Southern State 
sports. I love covering the basketball games. That's what I live for uh, uh, when it comes to setting up and breaking down and you know just being on the court, just knowing that you played a part in t- help, helping televise that game. That was uh, one of my passions. I, I love covering sports. I was a former high school and college athlete, so I loved to be in on the sidelines of the football games, covering all the games. Uh, recently, uh, I think two weeks ago, uh, Carthage. I watched Carthage play Sham- uh, Chaminade High School in St. Louis. Uh, my good friend Eric Kinnett, he gave me a call and said, hey, I'm driving down 44. Carthage is playing a playoff game. Uh, he's like, it's freezing. You know, I just want to let you know. I was like, hey, I'll come out and suffer with you. You know, I really love, you know, covering football. I, you know, even when I'm not being a journalist, on my days off, I'm, I'm pretending to be a journalist. So that's uh, what I love to do. So I, get, I came out and helped him just to cover the game because it's something I love and I'm passionate about doing. Uh, obviously, uh, this business is not as glamorous as it may appear to be in the movies and on television shows. Uh, so that's me standing in the rain, you know, trying to get a signal. I'm holding up a live backpack that, that helps us transmit uh, the sig- signal back to the station. Uh, you know, some days are, it's 70 and sunny, and some days it's pouring down raining all day, and they want you to cover that because it's, you know, it's your job, it's what you signed up for. So that's me trying to get a signal. Um, it's not as glamorous as it, as it may appear. It's, it's fast paced, it's cool, it's exciting. You have a tremendous amount of downtime sometimes, and sometimes you don't. Sometimes you have to get to a scene of breaking news and pull out your notepad and, and press record, and you have to say and explain exactly what's going on, and it's wall to wall coverage all day. But uh, it's, it's something I really enjoy, and something I'm really passionate about. And then you get the opportunity to cover the big stories, uh, much like the Ferguson situation in St. Louis County. Uh, someone like myself being from St. Louis, it was a tremendous honor to cover this type of story because you know, I'm from St. Louis, I'm a journalist, so to preserve that for history and to tell that story while it was going on, it was a tremendous honor to, to, uh, to, to be a part of that experience. Uh, I think the one thing about journalism that I love the most is it's, it's like a passport to, to areas of life that no one gets. You know, the average person wakes up, goes to their job every day, and they go home. It's the same thing every day. But the journalist, he gets an opportunity to talk to the presidential candidate. He gets an opportunity to fly in the chopper. He gets an opportunity to, to uh, cover the big stories like this. He gets the opportunity to go to the sporting events. I mean, it's, it's, if you love to do that, I mean, it's a cool uh, opportunity. And it's something I really enjoy, having that passport into life uh, where, air, uh, where people you know, don't get to see. You know, usually, you get to see it on the news, but somebody has to bring it to you. So I really enjoy you know, doing what I do uh, every day. And then there are things that you just, you know, you try to, you know, you find your niche and you, you want to be good and you want to perfect. Uh, I may not be the c- most creative shooter, but I love live shot lighting. I love taking the talent and making them look like a network reporter. It's just one of my passions, uh, something I, I'm really passionate about, something I talk about all the time, uh, drives people crazy. But I, I really love, you know, lighting live shots and making them look like a network talent. This is just another a live shot that I lit with another reporter. But uh, if there's anything that I want you to take away from what I'm saying is this. Make sure you don't look past your education to your dream job. It's the education that's going to help you get the job. Uh, Don't go through the motions. Make sure you network. Make sure you uh, get that experience that you you actually need to get that job. Make sure you make sure you take the, the internships. Make sure you volunteer your time. Make sure you uh, take the entry level position if it's available. Uh, so that was uh, a bit of what I've learned here, experienced here as a student and also an employee at KGCS and also a journalist uh, in St. Louis, Missouri. So.